Let's go. Welcome back, Miss Taisha. Back to the show again. Hello. How are you? Good. 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 Now, we're now, good. now. You saying that you got some some stuff to get off your chest about uh, Mister Orlando, Orlando <laughs> Brown? Do. Yes, I do. I do. Um, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I guess before I never really thought of it as being like my place to talk about, you know, whatever else I had known about his specific situation. And then I just started thinking, you know what? I'm he's like social media and people are like going crazy and they're calling him a liar. And they're just, you know, doing what social media does, or I guess just what the industry does anytime somebody has to speak out about something that, you know, happened to them, which is they're gonna say you're crazy, they're gonna, mm-hmm. you know, do all these other things. And so I was like, you know, let me just, let me actually talk about what I know. Um, I don't know anything specifically as far as like what specifically happened to Orlando, but I do know that I met him on several occasions, several occasions. And when I first met him, I believe it was in Florida and he was just, just like a bubbly, you know, kid actor, which, you know, um, Many people, I think, don't really understand how the industry works. So it's kind of like when you're it, you're it. And when you're on, you're like on. Like when when they have found their, and I hate to say this just because, um, I don't even know how to put it. But, you know, they have their token, they have their token characters, right? The, the, the Jamals, the Marcus. And they always name them these names. I have no idea why. I have no idea. It's always a Jamal or a Marcus or a DeAndre. Like, uh, uh, anyway, That's so true. right, it's like in in the entertainment industry, when they have selected their golden, uh, melanated, you know, boy, right, um, they pick one and they're just like, okay, this this kid is it. This kid is it. This this is it. And so during his time, like he was on so many shows. And every single every single time that I had seen him while he was younger, he was just like a regular, you know, just a regular kid, like just so I don't know if, if you've ever meet um or have you guys have you guys talked to like celebrity kids while they're kids, like 12, 13? Have you guys talked to any of them? I mean, you could tell, you know, they look alive. Like they look alive. Yeah. They, you know, they um, you know, they look, you know, innocent. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes, mm-hmm. yes, and they, yes, and they have this light about their eyes, and they're just so excited about life. And um, I remember, like Macaulay Culkin, like you know, like Dip, Drew Barrymore, like all these young teenage or kid celebrities, because they weren't even teenagers. Because I think when I met him, he was not a teenager yet. Um, he was pretty young. I'm gonna say maybe ten or eleven. Oh um, um, yeah, this this is after Family Matters. This is this is after yeah. Family Matters. This when he was all. Uh... This, has he gotten a Nickelodeon yet? I I feel like he was doing something in Disney in Disney Florida, so I don't know what show he was on, uh, or if he was on a show or if he was filming a movie. Could have been filming a movie in Florida. Okay. Um, but yeah, I believe this was after this. This was probably right around before he started really getting famous on Disney. Oh, that's so Raven, right? That's what yeah, he, that's so yeah. Raven. Yep. So, so I that's met a couple him. years after Major Pain, probably. Yeah. Oh yes, couple, yes, it was. Couple years it was after, after Major Pain. So what was that? That could have been what he was filming. I he could have been. Yeah, he could have been. Cause um. Yeah. Okay. So and with any shows, like when there's a lot of um, you know, young melanated performers and they're all together, it's kind of like you kind of hang out with everybody because all the sets are so close together. Everybody kind of just gets to know each other. And I know that he was a super fan of Kel's. Uh, Kel was also a fan of his. And so it was just so cool because he was so innocent. And he was like, he's, you know, he's just bright eyed, like uh, he had full of energy. I mean, like he was just like on 10, on 10. Every time I saw him, on 10. So I saw him a couple of times in Florida when um, they were filming all that. And then I saw him a couple of times in LA. The same thing. I think this is probably when he was doing um, that. So Raven, or when he was on a definitely on a Disney show. By the okay. second time I saw him, once again, full of energy, just vibrant, just regular kid. Like he was just so excited about everything. And then a couple of years later, I had seen him again, and it was a completely different, completely different child. Like completely, um, the light was gone. Um, 
he barely talked. I mean, this was this was somebody who was like, um, I kid you not, like you could not get him to stop talking to you. Like when he started talking to you, he was just like, like story. You know how kids talk and they're like, and then you know, I, I don't know, at band camp this happened, and then this happened. Like he was one yeah. of these kinds of kids, and and then the second, the one of the last times that I had seen him. Uh, we were at a bowling alley, and, and I'm not sure um, well, there was some kind of party or something. Maybe a show was ending. I don't really know, but I know Kyla Pratt was there, and a lot of a lot of the um, kids from the industry were there. And um, and it was really late at night, and I think they were even trying to go to a club or something after. But he was just an entirely different kid. Withdrawn. And at what age was when you this last time at the bowling alley? What age was he? Around um. This I want to say maybe like four, 13, 14, maybe 15. So, so this was during the That's So Raven. Yeah. Uh, yes. This was is. during That's So Raven. Yes. This is around the time where he allegedly was dating Raven Simone at the same time while they were on the show. Or they had something going on. Right. Yes. I, I, so I didn't know. I didn't know anything. I I, I wasn't sure because um, I didn't meet um, Raven until later on, or maybe I had met her before, but I just had met them separately. I had met those them separately. I believe he was on also. Was he on One Hundred and One? Or he he was on a lot of shows like at this time. Like he was filming. Um, I think he had filmed that so Raven, but he was also on like guest starring on a couple of other shows. So I'm not sure in between this time because I don't know. You know, I saw him say that he was dating Raven. Um, but anyway, she was not there when I had seen him one of the, on the, on one of the last times, and I remember asking Kel like, "Well, what like what's happening? Like, what's going on?" Um, his entire demeanor had changed. His entire conversation had changed. At this time, he was like trying to figure out like, "Oh, we should go get drunk. We should, you know, go get high." Like, it, it, and it was just a completely different kid, like all the way, completely. Um, and you know, a lot of celebrity or younger celebrities, I feel like, especially when they're on shows, when the producers are not melanated themselves, they really don't care. Right. They just kind of like give the kids sugar all day. They have to be up and hyper, you know, for the camera. And then kind of after that, they really, they really don't care. Um, I don't remember seeing, you know, there's a couple of like T and Tamara's mom and dad were present. Kenan's mom was present a lot. There's a lot of celebrities whose parents were present all the time. And those kids, you know, um, from what I, 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 I feel like that's kind of, I feel like that's like the difference. Like, you know, when you have a strong family um, lifestyle at home and you have someone that's there, that's a parent that cares about you, you know, that's constantly on the set. And I don't remember seeing Orlando's parents there. Um, but yeah. sometimes too, you know, kids once they start making all the money then it's kind of like they run the show it's kind of like whatever they need whatever they want whatever they need to do they just become you know they're just like in control and i don't know so sometimes it's because the parents aren't there but sometimes it's like the kids are like hey this is my money this is my show i do what i want to do i pay the bills you know but they're kids too but you know what i'm saying that so but i don't remember seeing um orlando's parents uh, or I don't, I don't remember seeing his parents. Not that they, maybe they were there, but I just don't remember them being like um, all around all the time. Yeah. And um, I had, uh, at, we were at this bowling alley and he was just looking so like distraught, like just so um, just distraught. And it was like, I think I was talking to him about act because like I said before, he was so like talking talkative and going on and on and on. And, and this time I had to like pull information from him. The light was gone. Um, and he was just like, you know, kind of like he wanted to get high or get drunk to just forget about everything that was going on. He just didn't even seem like he wanted even anything to do with any celebrity, anything at that time. So what you think went on at that time when he was, you know I, that it seems yeah. like something, something happened where, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so I have my master's degree in social work. So I'm a social worker, um, and I started a nonprofit, and I work with kids all the time, and so that's why I'm like, you know, no, let me just talk about this because there was a huge difference, and that usually happens when something traumatic happens, where there's like a complete change in personality, um, and um. 
I believe that he has been diagnosed with schizophrenia, but as well, schizophrenia can also come from um, a splitting of personalities due to trauma, sexual MK abuse. Ultra. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because uh, so, go ahead. So you feel like this whole him? So he just had started Disney around that time with the Death Soul Raven. So. It's like it seems like that's when they start. Once you get those type big contracts with those shows with Disney, that's when they start splitting your mind with this whole MK Ultra thing. It could be, you know, you know. It, I felt like um, because I remember talking with Kel about, it and I'm like, he was like beginning, like the height of his career. I think like the beginning, like I, like every, like so many things were happening for him that I that I thought his behavior didn't match with what was actually happening in his life. And so I'm like, what? And I was asking Kel, like, well, did something happen? Like, what's going on? Because he's he was just so different. Yeah, he he was. I mean, almost like a whole different person. Well, have hey. you noticed anybody he was around that could have influenced that too? Besides just Disney and like any pair, any other pairs he might have been around that that was on the same path and doing the same things that he was doing. And you know, well, okay. So, so one thing I was, no, so um, are you, you guys are familiar with Kyla Pratt, correct? And you know her, who her, I believe it's her uncle, Geronimo Pratt. Okay. Do you know who that is? You talking about Geronimo, what, from the Panthers? Yes. Did you know that was Kyla Pratt's uncle? Yeah, I thought, oh. I thought that was his grand, I thought oh, that grandfather? was his grandfather. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. that's Cal that's a that's a grandfather. Yo. Grandfather. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So okay. So I um Kyla Pratt was there and I think they were like hanging out and stuff. Um, but like what I think, you know, her family was pretty, you know, serious too. Like nobody's gonna mess with Kyla Pratt, right? Because of who her grandfather is, who you know, yeah. she has a very strong connections within her family. So she was pretty grounded. But um I remember some interactions actually with um uh, I don't know if it was a some kind of maybe it was an award show, Nickelodeon. Maybe it was a Teen, teen Choice. I'm not sure, but there was a weird interaction that I had noticed with Orlando and Nick um, at one of these events. This this was after I felt like his personality had changed, and this was like maybe it was the behind the scenes or at the Kids Choice Awards or some sort of Kids Choice Awards possibly or Nickelodeon, wow. um, and his. Even like his demeanor to me with Nick was very different. So, you know, and I kind of peeped, you know, you kind of look at something and you're like, hmm, huh, because I think I had seen them maybe before and then their demeanor was regular, you know, like, hey, you know, just like, you know, how people see each other. And then this time I felt like something was going on different, like some animosity, like Orlando did have like felt like he had possibly some animosity with Nick or there was something else that was happening that I wasn't aware of. Um, and what they was like confrontational arguing or... no it, it wasn't confrontational it was more just like you know when you see somebody and you don't really like them and you just kind of like look at them and you but you say hi and you're cordial but it's yeah. kind of like your fate nick on the other hand was you know it was like his regular self because you know nick when you do stand up you're like i i feel like nick is completely trained since he's very young to be in front of the camera you know to do what he's supposed to do to always be on. But yeah. um, I think at this time, Orlando was kind of like not having it. Like he was not happy with the industry. Mm -hmm. um, he wasn't happy with whatever was going on with Disney. He wasn't happy with his, like he just was not happy about anything. Um, and I felt that like when I saw the interaction with Nick and then what, you know, Orlando was saying now, I'm like, wow, that kind of goes along with that, right? Because if someone, whether or not, now you have to remember, so a lot of these kids, they're, they're kids, right? But they're also like, you know, want to experiment with drugs and with alcohol. But a lot of times they're experimenting with adults. And, you know, a kid's tolerance to drugs and alcohol is not the same at all <laughs> as an adult's Absolutely. tolerance. Yeah. And um, so it's like I always have felt like the adults, you know, allowed kids knowing that they were children, especially on shows where, like I said, there weren't a lot of par parental supervision. And, um, you know, these obviously the adults could not have had good, you know, motives for that. Right. Who gets kids drunk? Right. Or who's who's doing like, why are you sitting around with kids getting drunk? Um, so a lot of these were like ho other Hollywood stars who were adults 
having these types of relationships with the the, the, the children, the well, celebrity see, I, children. Yeah, well, I don't, you know, I I can't say for certain. I, I don't know. And I and Nick, you know, at the time I believe he was he might have been a kid too. Um, but he was an older kid, you know what I mean? So whether it's kids that are older that that these kids look up to in the entertainment industry, whether it's like, you know, like kind of like peer pressure, kind of like you do what I do. Um, and I, I can see how easy it would be for somebody, especially who doesn't have a good, solid family structure. Yeah, sort of get- like sort of like when Usher went to live with Diddy at 12 years old. Oh, and Usher, and Usher explained on Howard Stern show how he seen a whole lot of shit going on at Diddy House. Oh. Shit that his his young ass wasn't even supposed to be seeing. Oh, I didn't you know even what I'm know that. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, no, like that that kind of stuff should honestly should never happen. That kind of stuff should never happen. So have you witnessed any of this type of stuff personally with, with any? Because you've been around a lot of the child stars being with Kel, because you know Kel was definitely around a lot of them because he was one himself. So have you noticed any of that yourself? Well, I- well, yes. Well, I mean, you know, so many adults while we were kids were getting us fake IDs. They were trying to have us drink all the time, um, you know, trying to get high, you know, saying like, it's OK, don't worry about it. You know, you got the best show on TV. It's kind of like they were trying to use alcohol and drugs as a means to like, you know, be be cool. Like, like this is going to be the best time in your life, you know, but people overdid it. And these were kids. So they're throwing up um, a lot of the um, I don't you know, honestly, any um what is it called like any of the movie premieres any of the um hollywood events when there's kids that are that people still like adults all around were giving giving us alcohol knowing that we weren't 21. so you know our viewers going to want to know who they are right they going to want to know okay so so for example i mean well let's go let's go let's talk about chris stokes with the b2k and immature i mean chris stokes been yeah. accused of a lot of accusations that Raz B came forward and said, and, and a couple of the group members said that Chris Stokes was sleeping with the kids, sleeping with them when they were younger. I mean, you, can you attest to some of that? Okay, so um, there was a couple of times where, okay, so Kel was in uh, an immature, I don't know if it was an immature video, I believe it was um i don't remember what song maybe it was gosh darn it i'm sure you guys will be able to look it up and find it but anyway kel was in a music video with immature um and i believe it was uh chris stoke's sister and so i was down at the video set and um i'm just a little strange chris stokes you know he's a husband i think he has children i think he was married but i i don't think i've ever seen his wife or his kids um and because Kel was um, friends with, um, oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot his name. Marcus was, Houston. Marcus Houston, yeah. yeah. And uh, Marcus Houston was also on Sister Sister. And so, you know, they were really good friends and we would hang out with them sometimes. And I remember when, um, oh my God, Chris Stokes called Kel and was like, hey, I want you to come, but make sure you bring your wife. Um, because I want to, I want you guys to meet, or these kids want to meet you, or I'm thinking about signing this new group, come with me, you know, and uh, make sure she comes. And so I was so confused because I'm like, why do I need to go, you know? But I think they he wanted me to go to validate, like that he wasn't, I don't know, possibly to validate or to make it okay. Because, you know, that that's kind of strange, I feel like. You know, you're going to someone's house, Kel and Chris Stokes, because, you know, B2K or Marion and his little brother wouldn't have known. I mean, they know about Chris Stokes being a manager, right? But, you know, seeing Kel or seeing Keenan, I think they asked Keenan. I don't think Keenan was able to go. So Kel and I went. With- so it was it was immature featuring Smooth and Kel Mitchell. Watch me do my thing. There we go. There we go. Yes. Yeah, the music video was actually on YouTube. Oh, okay, cool. The whole yeah. music video. Really. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You can, okay, thank you. Thank you. I was, I was thinking of the song in my head. Like, I know I can't remember the name. Okay, yes. Immature, yep, and smooth. Yep, There's. there you go. And so, um, yeah, so Chris Stokes had called Kel and was like, hey, can uh, you meet me over here? Because I'm th- thinking about signing this group and there you want to meet you. And he was like, just make sure your wife comes. And I was a little bit confused at it. 
Um, but when we got there, we got to Omarion's house and it was Omarion and his little brother. And they were like, um, I want to say, you know, okay. You know, when you're kids and you're running around the house and you're a guy, you know, a little boy kid and you run around like in your underwear, like boxer shorts or gym shorts and maybe your shirt off. Yeah. Okay. Is that like a regular thing? <laughs> Is that like, I mean, when you are a small, small kid, I mean, yeah, but. Like 10, yeah. 10 and 11, 11 and 12. I mean, it was, yeah. this was like a Saturday morning too. So it was like, um, or Saturday afternoon. So it was like early in the afternoon, you know, I don't know. I know in my house, we like clean the house every Saturday. My mom hated my brother to walk around with no shirt. So he, she didn't like it. But I noticed that other parents didn't seem to have a problem with that, right? You just a little boy walk around, you know, cause you're not a girl. So it's like- Yeah, that's not really a big deal. Yeah, that's not, not a, big really thing. a big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not a big thing. Um, so Omarion, um, did, he just started singing and we were, I was just like, I was blown away cause he was, sounded uh, wonderful. And the same thing, I think his little brother came out too and was like singing and dancing. And it, he was, both of them were just phenomenal. Um, but I will say that like, eh, the way that to me <laughs> that Chris Stokes was looking at them, um, was weird to me. And I felt weird about it. And I remember talking with Kel and I'm like, I don't want to ever do that again. Like, I never want to do that. I never want to go anywhere with Chris Stokes and, um, and talk to anybody. Cause I felt like, like he was kind of like using Kel to vouch for his intentions, like, oh, this is a good guy, you know, he's married. Um, and like, you know, like kind of like using the fact that we were young and a young celebrity to try to like lure in other young kids. Um, and- so exactly how was Chris Stokes looking at them that was like, where, was it like in a perverted type of way? Like he was getting a boner or like what type of- <laughs> Yeah, I mean, to me, it felt like perverted. Now, I don't know if he was getting a boner or anything like that, but <laughs> you know- it's <laughs> Pulse, I know, right? Yeah, it was. You know, you know what I mean. Like when people, when when adult men are looking at little girls and look like it just looks, it just different. It's not like, oh my gosh, this is wonderful singing, but it's kind of like a different kind of look. I don't know if uh, if you guys have seen that, but you know, they look, they're looking at them like 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 meat, like they want to eat them or like, devour them. Yeah. Not like it doesn't seem innocent. It didn't seem like, innocent. Like there was a bunch of immature snacks out there. Exactly. Like, like, I like, and so from that, cause I didn't even know. I mean, I thought that Chris Stokes was possibly gay or something, but everyone was like, he's not because he's married, he has children. And so I just threw it out my head at that time. But then when we were watching um, Omarion and his little brother, you know, like performing. And like I said, they were wearing like shorts and I think their shirts were off. And these were little kids, you know, they're like little scrawny, little like 11, they were little, like 12, 11 years old, little bot, you know, they're just little scrawny little kids. But he was looking at them like, like to me, if I was a parent, I'd, I'd tell my sons to put some clothes on. Like I would, I was that uncomfortable. Dang, um, wow. Yeah, I was uncomfortable because, yeah, I was uncomfortable because, you know, they were innocent. They don't know what the heck's going on. I'm sure their mom was, like, innocent, you know, and I felt like Chris Stokes was looking at them like a predator, um, like a, how a predator would look at, you know. So you have you ever been around Raz B? And, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah with Chris, I have. With, uh, and how, you know, his relationship with Chris Stokes and. And, and and Marcus Houston, you remember he made some accusations about Chris Stokes and um Marcus Houston, you know, plug plug him in the plugging them in the in the booty hole or whatever. Hershey, you know what yeah, the Hershey, Hershey Highway. Highway. Yeah, and bro. have you ever seen any interactions between Chris Stokes and, and, and B2K and those the little get togethers they used to have? Cause they they threw Bow Wow in the mix. Yeah, Bow Wow so was in the mix, like so Chris Stokes, they would have these like get to, and he would call them like family barbecues or something. So I think when, for example, when B2K or when, whenever Chris Stokes, I guess, would sign a group, he would make sure like all the, all of them would stay in a house. And so at this time, I can't remember where the house was, but the house was somewhere like on the outskirts of LA County. I don't know if it's San Bernardino, but it was somewhere like not in LA County in a beautiful house. Um, and all the boys were staying there. And so most of the parties would start kind of early and then like their parents would be there, family members would be there. And then like, he was also like, I guess they would practice or something afterwards, something. But he would have these tickle parties, like 
I don't know, like tickle things like, oh man, like he would be tickling like them. And any uh, excuse to touch him, any excuse to put his hands on him. Man, it was like, it was, he was like, um, oh, you guys, um, everybody has to leave. It was like seven o'clock or six, you know, it was kind of, it was kind of strange to me because, you know, you think, okay, B2K, they, they, they just got signed. They're working on their album, you know, and this is supposed to be like a family party, but it was weird to me that it was going to be over like six o'clock or seven o'clock. I don't remember. It was ending very early. And I was just like, and then he was like, yeah, we're going to have our tickle parties. This is what Chris Stokes was saying. And I'm like, tickle party like that sounds like a cold word for something else a tickle party a tickle party tick tickle. I was, that that's that just don't sound right no a tickle party like like a grown ass man saying that he gonna have a tickle party with a bunch of little kids yeah and and i and then i don't think the parents live there like i don't think the parents stayed at this house i don't know who stayed at the house I mean, yeah, I, 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 I guarantee the parents yeah the parents ain't stay there that's probably like a house where he just kept all them there to perform, you know, to keep them there to record and practice and, and do whatever else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Have they little get togethers yeah. and, you know. Yeah. So I, I, to me, it felt very, grooming very, them. I, I think so. Like, you know, just to be completely honest, especially now that, you know, um, I've seen it for the past eight years, I've seen kids become groomed. You know, these are kids coming from nothing that don't have a lot of things in their lives that are waiting for their one opportunity and then they get it and then they're paying for their entire family's, you know, lifestyle now. And it puts a child in probably the worst spot possible because why would they tell? Why would they mess that up? Um, as which is sad, and it even goes back to you know, like I feel like sometimes these shows, Disney shows, Nickelodeon shows, they go and they grab kids from out of nowhere. And I, you know, I'm wondering if they do that on purpose. They go grab kids out of nowhere who don't have anything, who don't have any support, make them celebrities. And these are the kids, you know, whose parents are like, hey, whatever, as long as my kid's making money, you know, cool, even though their contracts are messed up. They don't end up having any money at the end of it because they've used these kids like through and through and through and they've used their image, they've used their likeness and they own all of it. It's crazy. And, and behind the scenes, they having tickle parties and shit. Man, yes, yes. And so, and I remember kind of thinking like, what the heck is he talking about? But I do remember like Rasby and the other ones like kind of like running around like, oh yeah, no, like kind of was like, like hide and seek tickle maybe, like where they were hiding and playing hide and seek. Or, and then yeah. the tickle was after that. I don't know, but I was just it rubbed me the complete wrong way. Um, and I remember telling Kel like that's just weird. Like this, Kel Chris playing Stokes, so what? Kel, the, so Kel playing yeah. tickle with them too? Well, no, Kel, so Kel didn't seem like he knew anything about the tickle party. But this wasn't the first time that I'd heard about this tickling. Um, I felt like I heard it another time when um, were Chris Stokes and. Um, uh, I think it was um, immature. Like, I think I had heard of this already with the tickling. Okay. Um, and I don't know, I think I heard it over conversation, but maybe I thought it was a joke because I wasn't sure. So um, for me, my mom had always told me never sit on anybody's lap, never let people tickle you. And so that's why it was like, oh my gosh, this is what she's talking about because, yeah. you know, but they didn't, it didn't seem, you know, it seemed like they're all kind of like part, you know, like with it. But, you know, as you get older, you're like, wait a second. And especially with with what um, Raz B was saying, it makes perfect sense. You know, of course, predators are going to use somebody else. Like, like once a predator has used somebody like, you know, and the, and the child gets older, for example, um, I actually have uh, teach classes about sexual abuse awareness for moms and for dads, you know, to because sometimes you don't know. These are usually the people that molest people are the very people that you would least expect. They're always close to you. They're the closest people to you. They usually live in the same house with you. They usually have, um, the children usually have a lot of respect and love for this person, mm -hmm. which is it makes it even worse. Makes it even worse. Now, then you add money with that and you add fame and you add four, like this person is the person that's actually providing your entire everything for you, you know? And I think they even use that. I'm sure that they probably use that as part of their grooming process. Hey, I did this for you. You can't do this for me. 
you know exactly and they create a whole in a dark deep industry around that so it's like an industry with inside the industry yep. right that everybody knows about and accepts and, and is a completely aware of and knows and accepts so basically like, they they's moving these kids around to engage in these tickling these so-called tickling parties so it, it could have been hep so have you heard about uh there was some allegations that came out that Bow Wow was touched when he was a kid by who, who was it was some type of uh what was it some type of uh housemaid or driver or something like that you remember Are that you... jr you remember that when um i vaguely remember about... i vaguely remember um that was going around for a minute and then you see uh you seen uh little bow wow and omarion hanging out a lot right and then and then you got orlando brown saying that uh Bow Wow got some good pussy. Some bomb pussy, yeah. Right, yeah, some yeah. bomb pussy. So, 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 what? So, you know anything about like why would he say that? Like, the, you think this has something to do with the tickling parties? Oh, you know what? I, absolutely. So, what I what I have found in a lot of um, child abuse or you know um, sexual assault, especially with children, is that many cases just like the tickle game or whatever these games that they play they they start off as fun games and they turn into fondling and they turn into other things but they you know uh they start off as innocent right no let's play hide and seek and then that goes to you know let's um if, when i catch you i'm gonna tickle you and it, it looks innocent until it's not and that, but i just think that they use these kinds of things to like you know warm the kids up i don't i've never met bow wow um but you know, anytime somebody says that that something like this happens to them, you have to believe them. And usually, kids kids are like one of the best lie. Like kids lie the best, the best. Kids are the best liars because they can show they won't show any emotion. You'll have no idea if they're lying or they're telling the truth. But of everybody that I have, if anybody that I have had to interview, and I've had to interview people like at the hospital um, after a sexual assault has occurred. Uh, especially with young um, melanated males, um, because it's such a traumatic experience, I've seen that they make a joke and, you know, because it's uncomfortable and um, it's a very uncomfortable situation. So in many cases, they make jokes about it to kind of like throw off, you know, kind of throw people off a little bit, like, because they don't really, they're not comfortable with telling, you know, or maybe they can't even, they might not even be able to tell exactly what happened to them because they blocked it out for whatever reason um or they're just unable to do it because they're like they can't even think of themselves participating in anything like that so they kind of make it like like it's a joke and so for him to say that like i say any man that goes out there and says any kind of stuff like this even if it, you know you know jokes always have truth behind them anyway but yeah i mean hey i, I would I would think that it was true. Like there would be no other reason for him to talk about these people if this didn't happen. And you have to remember, Orlando was like, like almost every single time I've ever seen Orlando, even from being a young kid, he was like on his own. So that means to me, there's like a lot of opportunity. You have a kid on his own um, with expendable money that can fly around and go around with other famous kids who more than likely have also been groomed by the industry. So basically they was teaching uh, Orlando to be a groomer also, because I'm um, for Nick Cannon to give him head that allegedly, for for him to say Bow Wow got some good wop, some good bomb ass pussy and all that stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's, oh, go it's, ahead. It's, yeah, no, no, no. It's kind of like, you know, when you had said that, it, it's, you're exactly right. It's like, so for example, like even, um, I know you've heard of the Corey Feldman, Corey Himes. And yep, yep. so what happens is, is that like once they found a kid that's like, like I was going to say down or with whatever it is they're talking about, right? That is, that's willing to, and like I'm going to say Nick is, you know, one of these, was one of these kids as well, like willing to do whatever. Like if they tell you to get a new manager, you get a new manager. The kid does that, right? And so, you know, they I feel like these are some tests. Like sometimes they'll talk to, to the kids and they'll be like, okay, your mom cannot be your manager. You need a new manager. Now, if a kid says, and they then they talk the child into it. They're like, because I remember, like I remember um, having conversation with Nick. I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy has been your manager for all these years. Like, dang, you're going to just change, like 
managers because they're telling you that it, you won't get to the next level unless you change manager. And then the guy was also his ride from San Diego. And I'm like, wow, like, but you know, it's like, this is how they do it. So, so it's like, kind of like they, they test you to see how far, if you, okay, if you're going to, if you're going to, and then, and they will talk like, oh man, they will talk terrible about like your parent. They'll be like, you know, your parent doesn't really care. They just want you for the money, blah, blah, blah. They'll give you an entire speech about why and how you need to have this person as your manager. And I feel like once you entertain that, once you start saying yes to that, once you start saying, hey, you know, I know that you're supposed to be filming this TV show over here, but hey, your contract says you got to fly over here and do this press release or you got to do this movie that we put you in. And and they're just like, yes, 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 because they have no protection. Then I feel like they like they they say, OK, good. Like or or let's say you the producer is like this kid over here did whatever to me orally or sexually. Right. They tell other people and then those other people try to get those kids to do the same thing. And then. That's kind of how it goes. They, like that, like everybody knows after a while, like so which kids are, are good. They basically flying these kids all around the world to do these things with people all around the world. Private flying to these so-called tickle parties. We just going to call them tickle parties. Yeah. 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 And the parents will have, will have no idea. And the kids, you know I mean? This is like, this, this is the, the, to me, like the saddest, darkest part about this industry, especially as kids, because they're still kids. So it's like you, you're you constantly holding what's so important to them now. And possibly the reason why their parents are are able to have a better life and they're providing for their siblings. You know what I mean? Like for their, for their siblings. You know, this is like these, they're changing their parents' lives and their worlds and they never want to let that go. So they're going to literally do anything to keep that. Mm -hmm. And okay, it's... Got, then what's... what's the agenda of making boys feminine and making and making uh women masculine. women masculine yeah yeah that's, well, that's heavy that's heavy in within hollywood i mean you see what's the girl, chick from hard candy she she didn't change oh, this uh whole complete ellen page who is yeah. now yeah. elliot page yeah turns yeah. herself into a complete boy you got sheer uh daughter that physically uh surgically got a penis on and like yeah it's like these environment well you know I, yeah you know i feel like it's just it's kind of like like uh i'm trying to think of a movie or like peter pan like where you want to be a child forever it's like kind of like whatever goes whatever happens or what's the, what's that story about the guy with the flute and then he had a little kids and he plays the flute and he plays this great music and the kids are following Pied him piper. Uh, Pied piper yeah is it Pied piper or yeah there we is? go yeah that's it and you know the kids are following him and they're doing whatever he wants them to do this is it's kind of like they put the kids in a trance and it happens so often and it happens to so many kids and then they are you know they also become perpetrate perpetrators as well and they they help to you know kind of like lure in like jazane maxwell you know i'm sure if um if chris stokes you know, has, was sexually inappropriate with Marcus Houston. Well then, you know, or, or let's say Marcus Houston was like, you know, his career was going down or whatever like that, right? Well then yeah. Chris Stokes would be like, hey, I need you to get some other kids. And this is like, that's how they recruit. That's what, that, that's kind of what I felt like was happening when Tell and I were at, you know, with, with Omari on his little brother. I felt like this was like, he was trying to use us to like vouch for him to recruit some more kids you know what I mean? Tickle like, parties. Right. Yeah. Right. And it's, you know, and then, but there's money there. There's going to be a, you know, so, so many people and so many parents are like, yeah, my kids are going to get signed and they're going to be famous. But at the same time, they're also going on tours with these people. They're like, their entire lives are spent with these people day in and day out. I can't even imagine it. I couldn't even imagine it as a child. So they can literally be taking these kids away from their parents for like six months going on tour years, and, years. and doing whatever they want to them. Yes. And then telling and then telling the kids at the same time that they're doing this, like, well, where is your parent? They don't care about you. I'm here. They always pin the pin you against your, 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 your family. family. Yeah. And your friends you know and everything. Saying? These people have separated those take you. And like I said, like with Nick, like like I felt like he was just completely separate, separated. And he got new managers. He got new agents. And it was, I was like, whoa. Um, 
because it's like they just want you to do whatever it is that they want you to do and then once you do that they're like okay cool this is how you make it like even with kel um when kel and i had gotten together and um he did the um he did all that and i didn't want him to wear the dress anymore and nick was like okay i'll wear it it's like they want kids that like don't have anything right they want kids from troubled background i think nick's mom was very young when she had you know they want kids from troubled background they want kids that don't have any support and then they're gonna they're gonna use that in order to get what they want from that child whether it's acting whether it's sexually whether it's you know it's all about power it's all about power then at the same time that they're sexually abusing these kids the kids are are you know there's shame and there's guilt right but they're also making money so you know, sometimes people are like, well, why are they coming out now? Well, they're coming out now because like they're just understanding. More than likely when Raz B, I think, came out with it, he probably was no longer living in the house. You know, Chris Stokes probably didn't have the same power that he had over them at that time. He was damn near an adult when he came out about this. Wasn't he was an adult. He was an adult when he came oh, out. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. So like, you know, people are always like, well, why are these people coming out? Why didn't they say anything? It's like, you think you know, people are going to say something when these people are feeding them? How? How do they say something? How can they say this is happening to them? How? Yeah, we're, yeah we're it's not as easy. Their entire career and chances to have a career. Yeah, it's not as easy as, you know what I mean, is when they're at, when you actually under their thumb and they controlling everything around your life, it's hard to break away from that. And they, like you said, they're taking care of their families and all that. And they're like, it's, it's, and a lot of times, the fam, like you said, a lot of times the family see these celebrity kids as basically the head of the household because they the ones bringing all the money in. Exactly. And more than likely, these kids aren't telling their parents that this is happening to them at that time because th that would probably be devastating. You know, that would probably be very devastating. Another one like um, Wade Ro Wade Robeson. I, I used to hang out with him a lot. Um, do you know who that is? Who is it? Uh, no, let us know. Cause I don't know who that oh, is. Oh, okay. So Wade Robeson, he was working with Michael Jackson. He was a little kid that was um uh, that would perform like Michael Jackson at like I don't know, three years old or five years old. Michael Jackson brought him out. Um he was one of the accused um I guess, Oh, he was the ones on that documentary that accused correct. him. Of, okay, all right, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So like be, now before and then because I would always I would ask him, I'd be like well, did Michael, he was, and at the time he was like, nope, nope, nope. But Michael Jackson was giving him all his music. Michael Jackson was paying for his, his house, his sister's house, his mom's house and had been. Um, and um, his father actually committed suicide. And I used to always speculate that his father committed suicide because he knew what was happening. He knew, like, you know, some parents know and some parents are in tune with that and some parents aren't. But I always felt like that, like, wow, his father committed suicide because the mom decided that Michael, that uh, Wade and his sister and his mom were going to live with Michael Jackson. So, like, as a dad, I don't know, you know, that seems like I would, and, and, and if you know your child's being abused like that, that seems like, you know, that goes along. Or so you, I mean, so you feel like Michael Jackson was grooming these children and doing these things with these children? Well, well, you well, you know, I I don't know, but when I was talking with Wade, he was telling me that he slept in Michael Jackson's bed all the time. He said that there were like seven, um, there were a lot of like cameras, a lot of things. Like anytime a person walked down the hallway, there was alarms, all these alarms going into the room like why would you need to be notified i get it he's michael jackson but like why would you have so many alarms going off to your bedroom and then why would you be sleeping with the kids in your bed you know what i mean like all the time like wow um it's weird you know and then you know michael jackson said that he was abused he had that song dirty diana by diana ross like um Oh, so you believe that that song was about Diana Ross grooming him? Possibly. Possibly. Yeah. She was a lot older than him. I mean, I, I'm sure it works both ways. But, you know, maybe it could have been the dad, too. You know, like some, like some parents don't have, the, like, all the, you know, they're not the smartest. And they're like, oh, okay, you know, imagine Michael Jackson and Diana Ross having a child or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, the dad could have seen that as, like, a possibility. You know, like 
So some parents, I think, um, even though they might not know everything that's going on, I feel like they're part of it because, you know, you're like, you know, who did you just say was sleeping outside? Like, Bow Wow, um, Usher, who in the heck lets their kid? Oh, Diddy and Usher. Diddy yeah. and Usher, like, like mm -hmm. come on. Like, as an adult, I'm not going to let my 12-year-old son do anything or 13-year-old son sleep with, a, uh, you know, live with somebody like P. Diddy. Not Like, just not happening. I wouldn't let my kid live with Michael Jackson or be sleep in the bed with, I don't care who they are, you know, like for me as a parent, I don't, I just would never, but maybe if I was a parent that didn't have anything, maybe if I was a parent exactly. that, you yep. know, That's was on okay. drugs or I was, a, I couldn't figure out how to make any money. And I see my kid and this celebrity is taking an interest in my kid in my brain. I'm going to know that there might be something else to this, but I'm going to dismiss it. Right. Because, the same thing happened with R. Kelly and Aaliyah. Same situation. Yeah. And parents, I think that's, yeah. yeah. And, and as a parent, you want to try to dismiss it. You want to be like, no, there's no way. But then in the back of your mind, there has to be. You have to think this. You have to think this, I feel like. Um, yeah. Any, to me, anytime any adult takes interest in any child, you it has to cross your mind. Because why else would adults take interest in children? Why else? Hey. So when you was asking Kel about what you what like what's going on with Orlando Brown, what was Kel's answer? Because I, I don't think you mentioned oh, what yeah, Kel no. was saying. Yeah, no. So Kel was like, Oh, I don't know. She was like, You think he's weird? And I'm like, Yeah, I mean, like, he's a whole different kid. I just I it kind of pissed me off. Cause I was just like, he was such a different kid. Like entirely different. Um and so Kel was like, oh, you, maybe it was puberty. And I'm just like, no, it's not puberty. Like, like he looked like like death, like he was dying inside. What do you like, think happened to him? What you, what you, I, mean, I, 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 I mean, you know, from, from me talking with other kids, what maybe something was happening happening in his life. You know, I don't know. Maybe it could have been a family member passed away. Could have been. But whatever it happened was traumatic. Whatever happened to uh, Orlando was so traumatic that he didn't to me he didn't even look like he even wanted to like do any of it like he didn't want to come to the set he didn't want to i don't know he just like he didn't want to participate in any of it but he was locked down to these contracts and he had to do it um i think they were even saying like i don't know that um maybe even i don't know i don't, i'm not sure if it was i don't know some people had told me that he was coming to set intoxicated um he was let like his like you know, just his work ethic. Like, this is a kid, probably, he was at the set early on time, ready to go, knows his lines, blah, blah, blah. And then he just started falling apart. It was probably just a lifestyle. It's probably just a, he, his whole lifestyle with the drugs and, and being around bad influences. You know, like I said, the adults <laughs> that be uh, influencing these kids to get on his... I mean, that happened even outside of Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I mean... This yeah. type of stuff is just not exclusive just to Hollywood. Oh but, my gosh. I mean Ooh, I had a track. We have a track coach in my city in Pasadena who is notorious. Notorious. I saw him recently with more kids. I, I just I don't understand it. I this is like such an epic. I don't get it. I don't understand it. The, if you have an if you have a person who is a notorious child sex offender, specifically with boys, and once again, this person is married. Okay, this person's married or was married. I don't know if he's still married. Um, to have to have this person as a head track coach every single. I remember, my brother was my dad was like, "Oh no, can't do that. Can't 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 run track." That's um, the, the the guy's name is Turner. Like, oh, can't run, can't do that because Turner's gonna give you you know a massage. And I remember talking to my parents like, "Why didn't anybody do anything? Like, how does this happen?" I mean, this guy went to John Muir High School. He was uh, everybody knew you know, him and his situation and what he was doing. But it was like, everybody just looks in, uh, the other way because the track and field is bringing in money. It's sick. Yeah, that's usually how it goes. That's usually it's how it goes. Sick. When that... sick. And I, sick. Feel like we, I feel like it's important that we bring awareness to this because a lot of people will sit back in the judgment seat and talk about Hollywood when it could be actually happening to them and their children right now. And they not even notice it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like uh -huh. if, if, if you if your child is in and like my son, anytime my son 
was doing acting. Um, I tried, I didn't want my kids to do anything with this industry um, at all. That was my first thing, but I wanted them, I didn't mind them doing it when they were babies and they were small, you know, because you're only on the set for like 30 minutes or something, you know, I would always be there. But yeah, I mean, this industry is set up specifically to use and abuse and they're gonna use and abuse you. They're gonna take all your money, you know what I'm saying? They're gonna give you fame. You're gonna be, become famous, but you're basically not gonna have much to show for it if you're not writing, if you're not directing, if you don't have good lawyers, if, you know what I mean? So, and I feel like they, the fact that Disney and Nickelodeon prey on unexperienced kids who like Kel had no idea of Hollywood, you know? Or Marion's mom had no idea. About, I don't know what B2K's contract was like, but I'm sure it was probably not the best. Um, so you you get all these unexperienced people and you give them these contracts. And then you say, hey, the, the same people like even Nick. I remember Nick, I was talking, talking to him. I was like, gosh, Nick, you. So they made you get a new manager. They made you get a new agent. And then you're using their lawyers to look at your contract? Mm. Dang. Like, but like, you know, but you have to do it because like, for example, when Kel was like, no, I don't, I don't want to do that. Then they're like, okay, well, you're not going to be a producer. Like, so they're going to take their money from you. However, which way you want to take it. Like, honestly, like I'm sure if Kel had decided to, and um, if Keenan too, cause Keenan's manager was his mother. If Kel and Keenan had decided that they would go along with, and I, I maybe Keenan got a new manager, maybe, you know, cause I'm wondering, maybe Keenan did get a new manager and that's why he continued. Like, like they're going to get your money regardless, right? They're going to get a piece of your money. At the end of the day, if you're a famous actor, actress, even if you're a child actress, you're only going to bring home, I'm going to say 10 to 20% because they're going to have their hands in your pockets all the way. The, and, and you won't become famous unless you, you allow them to do this. You just won't. They will. They won't even use you. You, you got to get their managers. You got to get their lawyers, even if it's you know not your best interest. You got to pay. You got to pay some kind of way into this industry, and um, and then you owe everybody too. So then it's like you can't even get out of the industry, right? Because now all these people helped you to get to where you are, and uh -huh. then you're gonna be like, no, nah, I'm not gonna do this anymore. They're gonna be like, what do you mean? You're not gonna do this anymore? Are you kidding me? They'd be like, I put my neck on the line for you. I got you this manager. I got you this agent. Now I'm going to look like crap because you don't want to do it. Absolutely. So the rumor that was going around, uh, I mentioned this earlier about uh, what happened to Bow Wow when he was a kid. It was actually the rumor I found. It was uh, Vlad actually asked him about it. It was a rumor about he was assaulted by his security. So wow. they, yeah. So he was sexually assaulted by one of the people who was doing security for him. He now Bow Wow said it was a rumor, mm. on but of course you know he's still in the mix with these people, so he's not going to. He has to say yeah. that. Like yeah, you said in a previous interview, you said they're trained on how to how to talk. Yeah, how public. to respond. Yeah, they yeah, ha you to have respond. to. You not you're not going to get out there and say that this you know they they're gonna. <laughs> they they already know it and that's the thing is too is like that they use other celebrities i'm sure you know they use other people to vouch for them like oh you remember this song that's why they're not famous anymore remember this actor guess why they're not famous and so it's, it's like it's a compute it's like a complete psychological fuck especially as a kid <laughs> you know so so they so 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 if this if this man was touched by security, so this means like what Orlando he did an interview saying how they put people around you, like like Andrew. you said you know it's, it's you wouldn't even expect it would be that person that would be grooming them or anything. So in this case, uh -huh. with Bow Wow, it was somebody who was actually supposed to be a security, but yeah. and like you said, they be saying, oh, we want you to have this specific manager or yep. this specific someone. So these are people that they're planting in their life absolutely. to keep the trauma going absolutely and that trauma keeps them quiet that trauma keeps them compliant because you have to you have to remember it works both ways so for 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 this if if bow wow would have come out you know and said that this happened to him right at this time well then how like how he the other person that you know was involved would also have to say that it happened 
and the yeah. odds of that are would be zero, right? And, pl and plus, this is his security, right? Yeah, There's this is someone that's on his security staff. You you definitely ain't going. They the ones that's supposed to be protecting you, right? Exactly. Right. Exactly. They're not gonna, they're, he's not going to go back on his on whatever he whatever happened to it. And then they already know this too. They already know that it's going to be any kind of sexual assault, any kind of domestic violence. The whole this the horrible part about it is because when you're trying to file a police report. They're always like, well, it's your version against theirs. Mm -hmm. And how do you get, how do you, how do you do that? And I don't, you know, I, you know, maybe you guys don't know, but um, rape kits and any of that stuff is extremely intrusive. I mean, like extremely intrusive to the point where like, I, you know, a lot of the survivors have told me that they felt violated again wow so it's like you know because i have uh, many cases i've had to ask like well do you need a you know do you want a rape kit and um in many cases and i'll be like you know and i have to talk to them and it's it's extremely intrusive and uh, they feel victimized again and you know and i wouldn't even you know like and then any males that i've talked to and i've had to explain to them you know because basically they have to insert things inside their bodies again in the same areas that were just traumatized okay. to get um you know samples and take pictures and then you have all these you know I, i'm sure you've heard about these crazy doctors uh, when people you know so like almost any industry is just Horrible. I mean, you got people going to sleep, C-section, woman getting a C-section, doctor putting his penis in her mouth. You've got... Yeah, I've a, seen that. I've seen yeah, that shit. A case in California where a dentist sexually assaulted a male patient that was melanated. Uh, a young male melanated patient sodomized him during... while he was in sleep. And this doctor's... And I don't even think anything has happened to this doctor yet. It's kind of like they want people to have all these traumas and have these traumatic things happen to them. And they want it to be so rampant and, and everywhere. And then when the, when you actually try to go and talk about it, then it's kind of like, well, how do we believe you? And the, cause and the kids, it's crazy. The, cause kids have always asked me, they're like, well, if, you know, if it's only us there, why, why do they ask me questions like this? Why do they, and I don't even, I, I really don't think police officers should be the ones to talk to kids about anything like this. Because how police officers question kids, and especially melanated male youth, could you imagine what that conversation would be like? Not, they're not good. I've never seen one do a good job at it because you know how police talk. Um, it always seems like you're the you were the one that's the problem. Yeah, I've, I've I've heard police ask kids, "Well, what did you do? Mm, what mm, mm. the f? What did they do? What like what did you do? Like, did you do some kind of like kids are like." you know, um, doing some sort of movements or dances or something because it, this is, you know, goes on so often that there's a belief that somehow the kids are acting fast or the kids are doing something to entice an adult. Now, I've heard that. I've heard that people who said they was in the Hollywood scene that sometimes the kids is actually the ones that start doing the sexual advances. But then, but then it makes you think maybe these kids were already groomed to do that, to draw, to, to learn I'm, and adults, to yeah, learn or, and adults. Or, or it never happened and the kids never did any sexual advances. Or, or that too. That's, yeah. That's and and they're just, and they just use that. And like, that's what I'm saying. Like, you really got to think about it. Like, if we think about just this United States of America and how they took out all the female trees and how they killed all the bison, like, you know what I mean? Like, this is purposeful. Um, you know, anytime people are trying to make you um, comply and they're trying to control every single aspect of your life, right, then <laughs> they're the ones that are in power. So they put these like things and they say these things to try to take the blame off of themselves, like the child somehow entice them. Like now, who's the adult? whether or not the child was naked, whether or not the child was gyrating, whatever. Let's say yeah. the child was naked and gyrating um, and on your lap. As an adult, you're supposed to be the one to say no, right? Because you're the adult. 
I, I you know it's so crazy because I've actually had to, to have conversations like this with police officers because some police officers refuse have refused to press charges uh, have refused to even take reports because some children are um, in the sex trade at very very young ages where their parents have sold them into the sex trade uh-huh. and then the police officer gets there and the person you know is like well the child is the one and the police are like yeah the child is the one because the child enticed this person the child was sending this person um you know sexting this adult now whether or not the child knew that that person was an adult because a lot of the adults play like they're you know younger and might be really old and but just look young and um the, the kids are blamed and they're like, well, they're just prostitutes and they're going to be prostitutes and I'm not going to, you know, press charges because more than likely the, the kid will be right back in here. And that's not the purpose of the police department. Like, I don't I don't know what's going on in this area of the society where the police are the judge, the jury, the prosecutor, you know, it's like that's not even the job of a police officer. The job of a police officer is to report and to file a report like that is their job. Their job is not to determine whether or not somebody is guilty. That's not their job. They're supposed to serve and protect. That's it. I, I, the protect to me is out because, you know, I, I don't know if you guys saw that. The, well, there's all sorts of laws that are in place that basically state that police officers do not have to do not have to um, risk their life at all. So they, they can actually decide not to risk their life. And it's completely legal for them to decide not to risk their life. There's a two different Supreme Court rulings where two different moms, children's were murdered by their exes with the dis- with the restraining order. And two women called the police. And I think they're t- definitely two different cases. I think it's two different states. And the police officers decided they weren't gonna respond or they weren't gonna act or they were tired of coming to that house, even though there was a restraining order and had decided in their brain that, well, he is the dad, so we're not going to listen to the mom and did not do anything. And children were murdered. Um, sad, like young children, like I didn't want to say between the ages of seven and 12. And the Supreme Court, and they sued, the moms sued um, the police department because of their failure to respond to a, or um, to the domestic violence restraining order. And the police department won, and it became president that police officers do not have the right, the responsibility to risk their life for anybody. Well, police officers are just there to make money for the state. So they yes. want the crime to be committed, So, and they just dare to clean up the mess and prosecute whoever's still standing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just so they can draw that money in for the state. They don't care what we do. They don't care if we kill each other. They don't care. No. Hell no. They don't no. care. It's like it's almost like it's almost like the show uh Squid Games. Yeah. And they just let yeah. them kill each other and they were standing there with the gun. They like, aren't you gonna do something? They standing there with those nope. big machine guns watching them kill each other. And when yeah. one of them dies, the they just came in and bring the casket in there and take their body out. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, this is yeah. it. Like I don't we, we really have to really like this is the time that we really need to wake up because if police officers can go and you know kill people that are running away and have no regard for our lives specifically, why do we need them? I'm so I'm so confused as to why I like for me as a melanated person, I've always been taught to never call them. Like never. Never like they've always made situations terrible. Like unless you really have to call them, like don't. Um, but like, you know, I don't know, like, I really think more and more people need to just not call them. Oh, one thing I do want to talk about is I don't know if people even are aware of this, but you can actually, if a police officer is rude to you, if you feel that you've been discriminated against, and this is with the police officer, this is with a district attorney, this is with the court, this is with the judge, even schools, any government agency has what's called a bond. And these are called, they're called, um, they're bonds. And so instead of filing, um, you know, or talking to the watch commander instead of filing a a complaint with the court before you even get an attorney, you can actually file a claim against their bond. And I think this is probably going to be one of the ways that we can just dismantle the system because everybody's works as, you know, everybody pretty much works as part of it. Right. But if there's so many bond claims, because that means that the police departments have to have insurance and their whole, their whole job is to protect the public. 
But if they're not protecting the public, then what the heck is there? What's the point? So instead of going to the police departments and, you know, saying and filing um, reports regarding abuse or allegation because they just get swept under, under the rug, instead of hiring an attorney who's just going to help sweep it under the rug too, right? Because they're all getting paid by the government, right? And the whole purpose is to protect the government, right? Make, make the government look good so they're gonna, they might settle out of court and whatever, what have you. You're not going to usually get your money. It's going to take a long time. But if people started going against these these um, these bonds, then it's gonna that's gonna destroy these systems from the inside out. Because you know a bond is an insurance company, and if there's so many, like they have to respond to an insurance claim, and the police department has to give you the information in regards to their bond. So if you if you ask a police officer, if you ask a court, you say, hey. I need to have you ask a judge and my, I, right now I'm doing it in my own case. Um, so you, they have 48 hours to give you the information for their bond company. And then at that point you file a claim with the bond and they have to take that claim seriously and you go ahead and you'll get paid out. I've already got one claim of mine paid out because the courts did not do what they're supposed to do. Judge did not do what she was supposed to do. Didn't follow law. But if I would have done it the other way and tried to file a lawsuit, who knows? That would have taken years and, you know, it's like, we got to get to the place where we just, hey, we just, we got to do stuff differently. We got to go after people, you know, where it hurts. All these industries, you know, if, if, if more and more people came out like, like, and, and started t- talking and telling people saying, hey, and Raz B, like the fact that we as a community are like, you know, do you mean, you know how hard it is for, for these young kids to come out and say that somebody sexually abused you know how hard that is like and some people tell me they're like oh people are doing it for clout what clout nobody in the me too movement got movie deals after that you know no no raz b didn't become more famous because he talked about sexual abuse look at orlando brown nobody's giving him more roles because he's coming out telling the truth nobody gets clout for this do you have neurological pain chest pain Heart palpitations, headaches, brain fog, anxiety, insomnia, fatigue, and abdominal discomfort. With all the environmental disasters and contaminants plaguing our land, water, air, and food, we need something to counteract all the pollution that is making us sick. This is where Zeolite comes to the rescue. Millions of people have been using detoxification supplements to remove harmful toxins, pollutants, heavy toxic metals, as well as to balance pH levels, lower the risk of viruses like cold and flu, support the immune system, and improve nutrient absorption. What is zeolite? Zeolite is a volcanic ash that forms over time when ash and lava react with alkalized water, resulting in a compound with a very strong cage-like structure and a negative charge. Zeolite is one of the most fascinating and powerful nature remedies available. Great to detox and balance your body. Health benefits of detoxing. The removal of excess heavy metals can improve overall health. Detoxification helps balance a body's pH levels. This product provides 30 capsules, one month supply. Ships within three days. Purchase now at night and daynetmarket.com and haven't been evaluated by the FDA. We do not claim our product cure or treat any ailments. Please consult with your medical healthcare provider to see if Zetox will be right for you.